If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. In part A, we're being asked to use Ampere's law to calculate the initial magnetic field in the middle of the 300 turn solenoid. Now the information for the 300 turn solenoid is given in the first sentence, and we know from Ampere's law that the magnetic field produced on the inside of a solenoid is given by the following equation. Now this equation was actually presented in an earlier chapter on magnetic fields. We have a constant multiplied by lowercase n, which we'll talk about in just a moment, multiplied by the current. Now it turns out that lowercase n is the number of turns in the solenoid divided by the length of the solenoid. We can see from the given information that the number of turns was 300 and then the length is 20 centimeters or 0.2 meters. So we can go ahead and plug in those values for the uppercase n and the lowercase n. The current was given to us directly as two amps and then again this mu is a constant. And when you crunch that down you should get approximately 3.77 times 10 to the minus 3 and then the standard unit of magnetic field will be Tesla. So this would be the correct answer to part A. In part B, we're asked to calculate the magnetic field of the 300 turn solenoid after 0.9 seconds. Well, we were told after 0.9 seconds, the current has increased to five amps. So we can basically use the same equation, but this time plug in a current of five amps. So we've gone ahead and plugged in the known information, this time using a current of five amps. And when we compute this magnetic field, we get approximately 9.42 times 10 to the minus 3 Tesla. So this would be the correct answer to part B. For part C, to calculate the area of the four turn coil, we simply have to use the formula for the area of a circle, which of course is pi r squared. Now the radius of that solenoid was given to be 1.5 centimeters. The question noted that that second coil can be considered to have the same radius as the solenoid. And since the solenoid had a radius of 1.5 centimeters, we can use that in calculating the area of this second coil. So we can go ahead and plug in 1.5 times 10 to the minus two meters, square it to get the area. And we get roughly 7.07 .07 times 10 to the minus four meters squared. And so this is the correct answer to part C. For part D, to calculate the change in magnetic flux, we just have to look at the magnetic flux equation which tells us that magnetic flux is basically equal to the magnetic field multiplied by the area multiplied by the cosine of an angle. We can assume that the angle here is zero degrees and that's going to make cosine of theta equal to one. So essentially that's gonna cancel out. And furthermore, since we're being asked to calculate the change in magnetic flux, we're going to have to make a delta in front of the magnetic flux symbol. Now it is the magnetic field that is changing. So we can also put a change symbol, a delta symbol, in front of the magnetic field term B. And of course that can be expanded out as the final magnetic field minus the initial magnetic field times the area. Remember in the previous parts of the question we found the final magnetic field in part B of the question. The initial magnetic field was determined in part A and then we just figured out the area in part C. So all of this kind of hangs together. We can go ahead and plug in all those known values. And when we crunch it down, we get approximately 3.99 times 10 to the minus six, and then the standard unit of magnetic flux is the Weber. So this would be the correct answer to part D of the question. On to part E, which asks to calculate the average induced EMF in the four turn coil. We know that induced EMF in a coil equals the number of turns in the coil times the change in magnetic flux divided by the change in time. Because the question is asking about the four turn coil, we know that capital N would be four. We just figured out the change in magnetic flux in the previous part, and then the time interval was given to us as 0.9 seconds. And this turns out to be roughly 1.77 times 10 to the minus five volts would be the unit for the induced EMF. So that's the correct answer to part E of the question. Part E also asks whether this induced EMF is equal to the instantaneous EMF and that turns out to be correct because if you go back to the question, we were told that the current is increasing steadily. And since the current is increasing at a nice constant steady rate during the 0.9 seconds, the induced EMF at any particular moment during this time interval will be the same as the overall average value. So the answer to that question will indeed be yes. 
Finally, on to part F, which asks, why could contributions to the magnetic field by the current in the four-turn coil be neglected in this calculation? Well, we'll notice that the induced EMF in the four-turn coil is very small. It's on the order of 10 to the negative 5 volts. Because of that small value of induced EMF, the induced current will also be a very small value. And so if the current in the four-turn coil is small, that will in turn mean that the magnetic field produced by that current will also be very small, at least compared to the magnetic field produced by the 300-turn solenoid. So in short, because we have a small induced EMF, we would have a small current in the four-turn coil, which indeed means we have a small magnetic field being produced in that four-turn coil, and therefore that small magnetic field can be neglected. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe and also click the thumbs up icon. Remember, you can send in your own question to the email address on the screen and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.